Alright guys, today I'm going to be going over my entire Nintendo DS and Nintendo 3DS collection. Let's get started. Alright, so first off we're going to get started with the first DS game. For me it's Chrono Trigger. This version of the game is the first time I ever played this game. I think currently I'm like four or five hours into it. I've always heard over the years that this is like the best RPG of all time. And typically I don't like a lot of older RPGs, especially 2D top-down RPGs. But I gotta say, I really do understand why people think this is like the best RPG of all time. It's really fun, the characters are very interesting so far. Um, it's very fast like like within the first hour of the game I feel like I'm already like playing the game You know I start up a lot of JRPGs and like it feels like I'm playing a super long tutorial for like the first five six hours And it doesn't feel like I'm actually like able to do what I want until like way far in the game But I feel like for Chrono Trigger within the first hour you're like you're in the game Like you are actually playing it like it, what you do actually matters um, so that's really cool. So yeah, really enjoy Chrono Trigger. Next up is probably the exact opposite of Chrono Trigger, uh, Crash Boom Bang. Uh, haven't played it yet, but I know this is supposed to be one of the absolute worst games of all time. Next up is Final Fantasy 3. My main goal with the Final Fantasy series is to at some point play all of them, but to at least have one version of every game, uh, in some capacity. So, uh, maybe I have one, two on the PSP, I have three on the DS, four, five, six on GBA, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm not too interested in having the original versions of every game on whatever their original console is, but so long as I have something on some console they were released on, I'm happy with that. Regardless, I haven't played this one yet, I will play it one day. Next up is the Legendary Starfy. I just picked this one up recently. I was thinking about selling it, but uh, it is missing its manual, so I wouldn't be able to get the absolute best value for it, so... I figured I might as well keep it. This was a game I've always been mildly interested in. I remember seeing the commercials for this thing as a kid. Um, I always thought it looked like maybe some sort of Kirby clone or something. So I don't really know much about it. I just know that I kind of want to keep it. Next up is probably my favorite Mario Kart, Mario Kart DS. I don't know if anyone else is going to agree with this, but this game feels like a Mario Kart if it was released on the PS1. I don't know, just the way the graphics are and just the way it feels. It's just a weird opinion of mine. But regardless, uh, nah, this game's fantastic. I think graphically for a DS game from 2005, this game is extremely impressive. Every single character is a model. They all have good animations. Um, the maps look good. Everything looks great in this game. The tracks are really great. And oh my god, the mission mode is so fantastic. And I don't understand why no Mario Kart game since has had that thing. I mean, that's probably my favorite feature of any Mario Kart. Yeah, I love Mario Kart DS. Fantastic game. So next up is my favorite Mario RPG, Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story. This game is just so full of charm. The dialogue is really funny and witty. Uh, the gameplay is fantastic with its intuitive, interactive turn-based combat. This is honestly probably my favorite looking DS game. Uh, just the way that the sprites look in the world, it's absolutely fantastic. And I really like the art style of the Mario and Luigi games. They're a little different than the traditional Mario look, um, and I, I really like them. So, yeah, absolutely fantastic game. Next up is Meteos. I ended up finding this really cheap at a GameStop once. Um, it's a puzzle game. I don't really like it that much, but... It's, it's mildly interesting. Alright, next up is my favorite 2D Mario game, New Super Mario Brothers. Um, I put the most hours into this game out of any of the 2D Marios. Um, I think this game is absolutely great. Love the level designs and the blue shell. Oh my god, that's the best power-up ever invented in a Mario game. It's just so fun to just roll around all the levels in that thing. Um, yeah, love this game. I think, honestly, this is probably the best new Super Mario Brothers game. Um, it was fresh. I think the level designs are really good. And yeah, that blue shell is just to die for. Yeah, great game. Next up is the only way I play Mario 64. I play the DS version. I think it's the best version. Yeah, the controls are kind of crappy. Uh, but, I mean, just play with the 3DS circle pad and it's pretty much fine. Uh, I think the extra content here is absolutely great. I think graphically this game is so much better. I, th I honestly think the original Mario 64 is like one of the ugliest games ever created. Um, and I think this game fixes a lot of those graphical atrocities. But yeah, no, I, I really love this game a lot. Um, I've played this game start to finish like at least 10 times. I think it's the best way to play Mario 64. Next up, I've got Pokemon White. I really like Pokemon White a lot. I remember not liking it too much when it came out just because of the Pokedex having all new Pokemon and them having some kind of whack designs. But I mean, every single Pokedex in every game, every new generation has had their fair share of terrible designs so that's really not a new thing with this game but the world is really cool the story is really great um most pokemon games either really don't have a story or the story is just really dumb uh this was not bad and it does actually bring up some cool themes of like uh slavery bondage uh 
uh, the role of government in society. Yeah, a great game. A uh, great Pokemon game. It's pretty linear, but honestly, I don't really care that much about games being linear, so long as they're just good. So, yeah, good game. But I think it's completely eclipsed by its sequel, Pokemon White 2. I think this is probably, like, the best Pokemon game. Uh, it's not my favorite, but I really do think the amount of content here, the Pokedex size, just, like, everything you can do in this game. Like, this game is just jam-packed with good content. It doesn't have a bunch of filler, well, besides the Pokestar Studios. That, that could have been cut from the game. I really don't like it when, and this isn't just this game's fault, I really don't like it when these Pokemon games force you to do, like, the, the bullcrap side missions. Like, the, the contests, the, the Pokestar Studios, and whatnot. Um, like, have those things in the game, but let me do them if I want to do them. Don't force me to do this crap. Uh, but anyways, yeah, no, Pokemon White 2 is absolutely fantastic. And honestly, I think best enemy team design in the whole series. And then I got a few cartridge only games that I'll go over. Pokemon Soul Silver, probably like the most nostalgic Pokemon game for me. I remember buying this game brand new at GameStop. In fact, the GameStop I bought it from actually just closed recently, so that kind of sucks. Um, but yeah, I remember using the Pokewalker. I remember destroying that cardboard box as soon as I opened the game. I was really bad about that when I was younger. Yeah, nah, this game's great. I think, you know, there are problems with it. Like, the level curve is absolutely atrocious. The Pokédex could be kind of... It's kind of whack with the amount of good Pokémon you can actually get, especially pre-National Dex. Um, but, I mean, overall, I think the game is just so fun. It's so full of charm. It's literally, I think, the best remake they could have possibly made for Gold and Silver. I really don't think they could have made it any better than what they did. And it's honestly the gold standard when it comes to remaking games. It fixes pretty much every single problem that the original games had and adds additional content that is good. So, yeah, no. Soul Silver is absolutely fantastic. Next up, Mario vs. Donkey Kong 2, March of the Minis. I think it's an okay puzzle game. Um, it, it, this game's got its fans. I know the new Switch game just came out, so obviously there's still, you know, some sort of a desire for the series, but it's just never been one of my favorites. Next up, I think, is a very underrated game, DK Jungle Climber. Uh, this is my favorite Donkey Kong game for sure. I'm really not that big of a fan of the Donkey Kong Country games, and I absolutely despise Donkey Kong 64. I honestly think that's one of the worst games ever made. But nah, DK Jungle Climber, this game is sick. I mean, it's just such a unique platformer. Like, a platformer where you only use the shoulder buttons to move around and you're like climbing on the pegs and stuff and you're using kind of physics to your advantage. Um, it's a really cool game. I don't like the GBA game, King of Swing. I think it's a little half-baked, but this game is fantastic. So yeah, DK Jungle Climber. Definitely one to play. And then last one, I don't really have much to say. I have a copy of uh, Neo, The World Ends With You. It doesn't even have its label, but I don't know. I figured I'd just show that I have it. All right, those are all my DS games. We'll go ahead and move on to the 3DS. All right, first off, got Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds. Haven't played it yet, but kind of like with the Final Fantasy series, I want to have a copy of every single Legend of Zelda game at some point. So, this is a Zelda game. Next up is Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Not my favorite. I don't really like the original Luigi's Mansion either, and um, I kind of like this one a little bit less. I just think the controls are kind of wonky, especially not having a second analog stick. Um, not my favorite. And I don't like the mission structure format in this game. It's okay to me. I'll have to see maybe if the remake on Switch is going to be better, but um, I don't know. I think this game's okay. Mario and Luigi Dream Team. Um, this is probably one of my most disappointing games of all time, and that's only because I hyped this game up so much when it came out, because right before this game, I had played Bowser's Inside Story for the first time, and I was like maybe 11 or 12 when that came out. This was coming out shortly after, and I remember seeing all the trailers, seeing all the promo images, finding out everything I could possibly find out about this game, and then when it finally came out, I think like most people, I found out it's just kind of okay. Like it's really just kind of uninspired. It's just generic. Like it just doesn't have nearly as much style and charm and wit as Bowser's Inside Story, I think. And I still think it's fine. Like it's not a bad game, but if I revisit it, I don't think I'm ever gonna complete it. I might just, you know, play an hour or two just to kind of remember what it feels like. But otherwise, yeah, not, not great. And also the villain's just kind of generic. And... I don't know, man. I'm already getting bored of talking about it. Next up is Mario and Luigi Paper Jam. I think I played this one for like an hour, and I just got like intensely bored by it. So, yeah, I, I got nothing for you. Next up is Mario Kart 7. For some reason, I really like the portable Mario Karts a lot better than the console versions, because this is the second most played Mario Kart for me. I really like this game a lot. It's really not special. Like, yeah, it adds the paraglider and the underwater stuff, but like... Like, they don't really do much in terms of the track design with it. It's just a fun, competent game. It's almost like Mario Kart Wii on the 3DS. Um, graphically, it looks really great. The tracks are good for the most part. It's just a solid Mario Kart. Doesn't really do anything special. There's no mission mode. It's just kind of, you know, 
race the tracks and have fun with it. I guess it was just cool having such like a good looking Mario Kart game on a portable at the time with actually like competent online too. Like the online I remember on this not being, it wasn't that bad. It's a solid game. Next up is Pokemon X. I remember actually going to the midnight release of this at a GameStop. I think that's the only midnight release I've ever been to. Kind of like with Mario and Luigi Dream Team, I really, really hyped this game up to the moon and it ended up just not being that great. Like, in hindsight, I think it's good and it's definitely the best out of, you know, any of the 3DS games, but I don't think that's really saying much. I just think it's it's kind of generic. It's It just doesn't have as much charm as, you know, Unova. Uh, I think Kalos is just kind of a, I don't know, I think it's just kind of a boring region. I don't really remember any of the rivals in the game, because they're not rivals, they're just your best buddies the whole time. Uh, I missed like when your rival was just a dick to you. Like I, I, I really missed that in the first game and the second game. I don't like how they turn the rival into your friend who's just trying to cheer you on. It's like nah bro, just call call me out and you know be mean to me so that I actually want to like beat you. Yeah, I don't know, not a fan of this. Oh, and also it's like the easiest Pokemon game ever made. Well, I haven't played the Switch games because they look absolutely atrocious, but I've heard those are like baby's first game ever. Um, so maybe this game is like hard in comparison, but. Nah, like, especially, like, if you play with the EXP share on in this game, like, you basically just curb stomp every single, everything in the game. Like, you will not have trouble beating this game at all. Um, you have to, like, intentionally make this game hard. Like, only play with two Pokemon EXP share off or something. And no Mega Evolution. Oh, yeah, Mega Evolution. I completely forgot that Mega Evolution is even in the game. What a weird gimmick they added to Pokemon with Mega Evolution. Just a strange concept that, like... Isn't like I just don't understand the appeal of it. All the designs for the Mega Evolutions are just like so like I don't know how else to put it. Overly complicated, verbose physically. Like I just don't I just don't like Mega Evolution as a concept. I think it's kind of lame. It's very like O C deviant R T to me. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Pokemon X, it's okay. But it's a hell of a lot better than Pokemon Moon. I think this game's trash. It's got a cool world. It, it does actually have an interesting setting, but it's just very. I, I don't know. Um, oh, actually, I'm remembering now. The obnoxious spikes in difficulty. This game is horribly easy, except in a few key boss fights that will absolutely destroy you. Um, I really don't appreciate that. That crap is just annoying. And also the story is just weird. Yeah, I don't know. Not a fan. Next up, Scribblenauts Unlimited. Um, I never played this one, but I used to have the original Scribblenauts on DS. I used to play that game all the time. Um, cool concept. I mean, you, you write in a word and it appears in the game. I'm sure every single Scribblenauts game that came out after the first one got more and more complicated. Like, you can add in, I want a polka dotted invisible jet on top of a jaguar and it would just give you that whereas i remember in the first game like you couldn't get that complicated with requests it wouldn't be able to give you everything so i am curious to see like what these later games would let you do yeah i mean really cool concept for a game i don't really remember the structure of the game like i don't remember if there was like an actual beginning middle or end like i, I kind of just remember just messing around so not really sure like how good of a game it is rather than just like a tool to mess around with kind of like a gary's mod or something uh, but yeah, I think it's it's a fine game. Next up is Super Mario 3D Land. I think it's just a kind of good Mario game. It, it reminds me as if like new Super Mario Brothers was put in a 3D format where it's like, it doesn't really do anything super innovative. It's just kind of a solid return to format. Problem there is like when new Super Mario Brothers came out, there hadn't been a 2D Mario for a long time. So it felt new. Whereas with this, it's like, this almost felt like a downgrade from the previous 3D game. The previous 3D game to this was Super Mario Galaxy 2, which in comparison is like a night and day stark contrast in like quality. I mean, this game is fine and it's good as a portable game. When a game like Super Mario 3D World exists, which I think is literally better than this one in every single way possible, I just don't really see a reason to come back to this. All right, and last from the collection is Super Smash Brothers for 3DS. Um, I really don't like Smash 4 at all. I don't like the Wii U version. I really don't like this version. I just don't like the way it controls. I think Smash Ultimate fixed this game like in every single way. I just really don't like it. And for me, it's just so hard to play Smash on anything but a GameCube controller. So like playing it without a controller on a handheld is like, <laughs> no, <laughs> I can't do that. I can't believe there were tournaments for this game. I don't know. I, I, just, I just don't like it that much. But anyways, that was my Nintendo DS and my Nintendo 3DS collection. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.